Hi, are you ready to continue? Today's chapter is called The Grand High Witch. Now, all witches are evil. They all want to squelch children and make them disappear from earth. But there's one that's supremely evil, more evil than the rest, and this is the Grand High Witch. The next day, a man in a black suit arrived at the house carrying a briefcase, and he held a long conversation with my grandmother in the living room. I was not allowed in while he was there, but when at last he went away, my grandmother came in to me, walking very slowly and looking rather sad. That man was reading to me your father's will, she said. What is a will, I asked. It is something you write before you die, she said. And in it, you say, who is going to have your money and your property? But most important of all, a will says, who is going to look after your child if both the mother and the father are dead? A fearful panic took hold of me. It did say you, Grandmama. I cried. I, I don't have to go live with anyone else, do I? No, she said. Your father would never have done that. He has asked me to take care of you for as long as I live. And he has also asked that I take you back to your own house to live in England. He wants us to stay there. But why, I said, why can't we stay here in Norway? You would hate to live anywhere else. You told me. I know, she said, but there are a lot of complications with money and with the house that you wouldn't understand. Also, it said in the will that although your family is Norwegian, you were born in England and, he, and you have started your education in English schools. He wants you to continue there. Oh, Grandmama, I cried. You don't want to go and live in our English house. I know you don't. Well, of course I don't, she said, but I am afraid I must. The will said your mother felt the same way about it, and it is important to respect the wishes of her parents. There was no way out of it. We had to go to England, and my grandmother started making arrangements at once. Your next school term begins in a few days, she said, so we don't have any time to waste. On the evening before we left for England, my grandmother got onto her favorite subject once again. There are not as many witches in England as there are in Norway, she said. I'm sure I won't meet one, I said. I sincerely hope you won't, she answered, because those English witches are probably the most vicious in the whole world. As she sat there smoking her foul cigar and talking away, I kept looking at the hand with the missing thumb. I couldn't help it. I was fascinated by it, and I kept wondering what awful thing had happened during that time when my grandmother was young and had met a witch. It must have been something absolutely appalling and gruesome, otherwise she would have told me about it. Maybe the thumb had been twisted off, or perhaps she had been forced to jam her thumb down the spout of a boiling kettle until it steamed away, or did someone pull it out of her hand like a tooth? I couldn't help it. I kept trying to guess. Tell me what those English witches do, Grandmama. I said. Well, she said, sucking away at her stinking cigar, their favorite ruse is to mix up a powder that will turn a child into some creature or another that all grown-ups hate. What sort of creature, Grandmama? Often it's a slug, she answered. A slug is one of their favorites. Then the grown-ups step on the slug and squish it without knowing that it's really a child. That's perfectly beastly, I cried. Or it might be a flea said my grandmother. They might turn you into a flea and without realizing what she was doing, your own mother would get out the flea powder and then it's goodbye to you. You're making me nervous, Grandmama. I don't think I want to go back to England. Well, I've known English witches, she went on, who have turned children into pheasants and then sneaked the pheasants up into the woods the very day before pheasant shooting season started. Ouch, I said, so the children get shot? Of course they get shot. And then they get plucked and roasted and eaten for supper. I pictured myself as a pheasant, flying frantically over the men with the guns, swerving and dipping as the guns exploded below me. Yes, my grandmother said, it gives the English witches great pleasure to stand back and watch the grown-ups doing away with their own children. I really don't want to go to England, Grandmama. Of course you don't, she said, nor do I, but I'm afraid we've got to. Are witches different in every country? I asked. Completely different, my grandmother said, but I don't know too much about the other countries. Don't you even know about America? I asked. Not really, she answered, although I have heard it said that over there in America, witches are able to make even the grown-ups eat their own children. Never, I cried. How could it be so? Oh, Grandmama, it couldn't be true. I don't know whether it's true or not, she said. It's just a rumor I've heard. 
But how could they possibly make grown-ups eat their own children? By turning them into hot dogs, she said. That wouldn't be too difficult for a very clever witch. Does every single country in the whole world have a witch? I asked. Wherever you find people, you find witches, my grandmother said. There is a secret society of witches in every country. And do they all know one another, Grandmama? They do not, she said. A witch only knows the witches in her own country. She is strictly forbidden to communicate with any foreign witches. But an English witch, for example, will know all the other witches in England. They're all friends. They bring each other up on the telephone. They swap deadly recipes. Goodness knows what else they talk about. I hate to think. I sat on the floor watching my grandmother. She put her cigar stub in the ashtray and folded her hands across her stomach. Once a year, she said, the witches of each separate country hold their own secret meeting. They get all together in one place to receive a lecture from the Grand High Witch of all the world. From who? I cried. Oh, she is the ruler of them all, my grandmother answered. She is all powerful. She is without mercy. All the other witches are petrified of her. They see her only once a year at their annual meeting. She goes there to whip up excitement and enthusiasm and to give orders. The Grand High Witch travels from country to country attending those annual meetings. Where do they have those meetings, Grandmama? Well, there are all sorts of rumors, my grandmother answered. I have heard it said that they had just booked into a hotel like any other group of women who are holding a meeting. I have also heard it said that some very peculiar things go on in the hotels where they hold their meetings. It is rumored that the beds are never slept in, that there are black mer burn marks on the carpets in the bedrooms, that toads are discovered in the bathtubs, and that down in the kitchen, the cook once found a baby crocodile swimming in a saucepan of soup. My grandmother picked up her cigar and took another puff. Where is the Grand High Witch when she's not at home? I asked. Nobody knows, my grandmother answered. If we knew that, then she could be rooted out and destroyed. Witchophiles all over the world have spent their lives trying to discover the secret location of the headquarters of the Grand High Witch. What is a witchophile, Grandmama? A person who studies witches and knows a lot about them, my grandmother said. Are you a witchophile, Grandmama? I am a retired witchophile, she said, but I am too old to be active any longer. When I was younger, though, I traveled all over the globe trying to track down the Grand High Witch. I never came even close to succeeding. Is she rich? I asked. Oh, she's rolling in money, my grandmother said, simply rolling in it. Rumor has it, there's a machine in her headquarters which is exactly like the machine the government uses to print money. After all, banknote money are only bits of paper with special designs and pictures on them. Anyone can make them who has the right machine and the right paper. My guess is that the Grand High Witch makes all the money she wants and she dishes it out to all the witches in each country. What about the foreign money? I asked. Well, those machines can make Chinese money if you want them to. It's only a question of pressing the right button, my grandmother said. But Grandmama, I said, if no one's ever seen the Grand High Witch, how can you be so sure she exists? My grandmother gave me a long and very severe look. Nobody's ever seen the devil, she said, but we know he exists. The next morning we sailed for England and soon I was back at the old family house in Kent, but this time with my grandmother to look after me. Then the Easter term began and every weekday I went to school and everything seemed to have come back to normal again. Now at the bottom of our garden, there was an enormous conker tree and high up in its branches, Timmy, my best friend, and I had started to build a magnificent tree house. We were only able to work on it on the weekends though, but we were getting along just fine. We had begun with the floor, which we built by laying wide planks between two quite far apart branches and nailing them down. Within a month, we had finished the floor. Then we constructed a wooden railing around the floor and that only left the roof to build. The roof was the difficult bit. One Saturday afternoon, when Timmy was in bed with the flu, I decided to make a start on the roof all by myself. Oh, it was lovely being high up there in that conker tree, all alone with the pale young leaves coming out everywhere around me. It made me feel extra excited. My grandmother had told me that if I fell, I was so high up I would break a leg. And every time I looked down, I got a little tingle in my spine. Here's a picture of the narrator. You can see him right here. 
the hammer. Here's he's up behind the tree. That's why there's the branches and the leaves. And here's the floorboards of the um, treehouse. And here's the railing. He's trying to put on the roof. I worked away nailing the first plank on the roof. And then suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of a woman standing immediately below me. She was looking up at me and smiling in the most peculiar way. When most people smile, their lips go out sideways, see? Goes out sideways. This woman's lips went upwards and downwards, showing all of her front teeth and gums. That's terrifying. The gums were like raw meat. It's always a shock to discover that you're being watched when you thought you were alone. And why was this strange smiling woman in my garden anyway? I noticed she was wearing a small black hat and she had black gloves on her hands that came nearly up to her elbows. Gloves? She was wearing gloves. I froze all over. I have a present for you, she said, still staring at me, still smiling, that creepy smile, still showing all her teeth and gums. I didn't answer. Come here out of that tree, little boy, she said, and I shall give you the most exciting present you've ever had. Her voice had a curious little rasping quality and made her sort of metallic sound as though her throat was full of drawing pins. Without taking her eyes from my face, she very slowly put one of her gloved hands into her purse and drew out a little green snake. She held it up for me to see. It's tame, she said. So here's the narrator up in the tree in the top picture, looking down and there's the creepy looking woman smiling all weird, holding the snake, looking up at him, asking him to come down. The snake began to coil itself around her forearm. It was a brilliant color green. If you come down here, I shall give him to you, she said. Oh, Grandmama, I thought, come and help me. And then I panicked. I dropped the hammer and shut up that enormous tree like a monkey. I didn't stop till I was so high I could possibly go no further, and there I stayed, quivering with fear. I couldn't see the woman now. There were layers and layers and layers of leaves between her and me. I stayed up there for hours, and I kept very still. It began to grow dark. At last, I heard my grandmother calling me. I'm up here, I shouted back. Come down at once, she called out. It's past your supper time. Grandmama, I shouted, has that woman gone? What woman? My grandmother answered back. The woman down there in the back black gloves. There was silence from below. It was the silence of someone who was too stunned to speak. Grandmama, I shouted again. Has she gone? Yes, my grandmother answered at last. She's gone. I'm here, my darling. I'll look after you. You can come down now. I climbed down. I was trembling. My grandmother enfolded me in her arms. I think I've seen a witch, I said. Come inside, she answered. You'll be all right with me. She led me into a house and gave me a cup of hot cocoa with lots of sugar in it. Tell me everything, she said. I told her. By the time I had finished, it was my grandmother who was trembling. Her face was ashy gray, and I saw her glance down at that hand of hers that didn't have a thumb. You know what this means, right? She asked. It means there's one of them living in our district. From now on, I'm not letting you walk alone to school. Do you think the witch could be after me especially? I asked. No, I doubt that. One child is as good to kill as any with those creatures. It is hardly surprising that after that, I became a very witch-conscious little boy. If I happened to be all alone on the road and saw a woman approaching who was wearing gloves, I would quickly skip to the other side of the road. And as the weather remained pretty cold during the whole of that month, nearly everyone was wearing gloves. Curiously enough, though, I never saw that woman with the green snake again. That was my first witch, but it wasn't my last.